Euromax highlights coming up on the show. Talk of the town featuring Patrick Moore and his outlandish fashion shows. Dressed to impress Guido Maria Kretschmer and his elegant evening wear. On the catwalk, designer Killian Kerner wows the critics at Berlin Fashion Week. Euromax Highlights, and here's your host, Karen Helmstedt. Hello there, and welcome to our Highlights edition, which this time amounts to the best of our Euromax fashion summer. Berlin Fashion Week brought the creme de la creme of the fashion scene to the German capital for five action-packed days of fashion shows and events, with major trade fairs like the bread and butter and premium exhibitions happening alongside. Well, as a platform for major designers, Fashion Week has more than established itself, but it's also a great chance for young up-and-coming talent to get some exposure and the Designer for Tomorrow Award is just one event that fulfills that mission. It's their first outing in front of such a big audience. The five finalists at the Designer for Tomorrow Award at Berlin Fashion Week are vying for the chance to produce their own collection. Two days earlier, the last fittings took place at a Berlin hotel. The contest is taking place this year for the fourth time. 23-year-old Mark Buscher from Leipzig is on the shortlist. It's a competition I feel you just have to take part in when you've graduated and want to become a designer. Designer Alexandra Kiesel from the Weissensee Art School in Berlin is taking part with a collection that's inspired by the Bauhaus aesthetic. The award would set a ball rolling, but then it would be up to you to keep it rolling. 25-year-old Markus Schmidtbauer from Munich is hoping his daring designs will set his collection apart and catch the jury's eye. There are loads of designers out there making very nice frilly blouses and pencil skirts, but we've seen it all before. Nobody's seen the work of 32-year-old Lena Hasebeta from Bielefeld before. She's the oldest participant, but she's not going to let that worry her. Everybody's relaxed and the models are great. So are the other finalists. There's no sense that we're all competing. Two days later and the show's about to get underway in the tent in front of the Brandenburg Gate. It's a laid-back affair and the mood is upbeat. Each participant gets to present eight outfits to a prestigious jury, which includes Christiana Arp, editor-in-chief of German Vogue, and, of course, U.S. designer Mark Jacobs. All the contestants get five minutes to demonstrate their creativity and skill in front of several hundred invited guests. Five finalists were chosen from 150 participants. Their appearance on the catwalk may or may not be a taste of things to come. Only one of them can win the award. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to announce the winner. The winner for the designer for tomorrow is Alexandra Kiesel. Over the next few months, Alexandra Kiesel will get to produce her very first commercial collection with the support of the Pagan Kloppenburg department store. All of the, the five finalists were great, each one in their own way. They each have their own vision and, and they're very talented and very thorough, like I said in the video. And I think they're, they're all winners. But um, Alexandra, I guess, you know, voted by, by the, the group, the whole committee. Um, one and I, I think her her vision, like she said, she is conceptual, but I think the clothes are wearable. They're new and fresh and exciting, and uh, I think they were quite good and, and uplifting to see as well. 
The winning collection is put together like building blocks. The customer can mix and match as she likes. I think the euphoria hasn't quite hit me, but I'm still in a bit of a daze. But it's great. I don't know what will happen next, but it's got the ball rolling, and I'm going to have to keep it rolling. Alexandra Kiesel will be back at Berlin Fashion Week next year, hopefully with an equal amount of success. Well, speaking of young designers, he still gets that tag from the press. But ever since founding his own label in 2008, German designer Patrick Moore moves in the circles of the elite. His creations are eccentric, avant-gardist and provocative to outspoken. And while most designers bend over backwards to make their models look stunning, that's not always his priority. At Patrick Moore's catwalk show last summer, the audience had to look twice to see if the models were male or female. The androgynous look has always been a favorite of this young designer, who in 2007 won the Best Collection Award for his graduation show at the Esmod Fashion School in Munich. I can't stand today's standard aesthetic. I loathe it. There's so much more out there than the whole bling, glamour, we're all millionaires look. I want to show that men and women can live without all that and still be happy. Moore has never made a secret of his distaste for the flashiness of the fashion industry. At one event, he sent homeless people from Berlin down the runway. Another featured bodybuilders decked out in rabbit's teeth and plastic bags. That wasn't about wearable fashion. Most of the collection was only suited to the catwalk. There was nothing anyone could have actually worn. I deliberately set out to shock and everyone thought, what's going on here? Before starting his fashion studies in 2003, Patrick Moore worked as a model and trained as a retail salesman and a carpenter. Now 30, he works out of this studio in a Munich basement, designing two collections a year, as well as a jeans range and accessories. Everything I've done has made me tougher. I started working relatively young because at 17 I thought, to hell with school, I want to get a job. So I was thrown in at the deep end, starting work at 5 in the morning, sanding down window frames when I was really young. It was good for me. It was exactly what I needed. Patrick Moore is proud of his past achievements and even takes his first piece of woodwork with him wherever he works. In fact, his fondness for wood is even reflected in his collections. Patrick Moore wants his clothes to be affordable. This dress will cost around 200 euros. His t-shirts go for about 60 euros. He makes fashion that reflects his own personality. The white rivet is his emblem, as are graphic prints. I'm a very complicated person, and ever since I was a child I've offended people. But that doesn't appear to have been an obstacle to success. Maybe he's mellowed. At his catwalk show during Berlin Fashion Week earlier this year, Patrick Moore's Autumn Winter 2011-2012 collection was actually wearable. I'd like people to stop using the term newcomer and recognize that this is a label that's developed and should be taken seriously. I've become a brand and moved on from being the young, eccentric bird of paradise in the newcomer camp. That's not me anymore. But that doesn't mean Patrick Moore has gone completely mainstream, as his current commercial for jeans goes to show. 
well, mainstream he might not be either, but glamour is certainly a top priority for German designer Guido Maria Kretschmer. He's one of this country's shining lights in the fashion industry, and his many fans include actresses Jane Seymour, Charlize Theron and Martina Gedeck. And while he has showrooms in Munich and Berlin, the real heart of his business beats in his hometown of Münster. Guido Maria Kretschmer has his main studio in Münster in northwestern Germany. Today, his favorite model, Zoe Halali, is trying on designs from his new collection. The pieces took just three weeks to finish, largely thanks to his dedicated team. They've been working together for years, and they know Kretschmer's style. <laughs> There's a French element. I have a very elegant woman in mind. I just enjoy making women more beautiful. That's my passion. Kretschmer also has a passion for tailor-made garments and making couture-quality clothing accessible. He says the designs are meant for all shapes and sizes. It fits a lot of women. I always make sure that my designs are scalable. Sizes 44, 46, 48 and so on don't faze me. The 46-year-old designer lives on the Spanish island of Mallorca, but he has property and showrooms in Berlin and Munich. His label is based in Münster, where Kretschmer was born. He and his team have been working there for almost 25 years, though he spends most of his time in Spain. I'm still a local boy at heart. That's why I've maintained a healthy distance from all the fashion frenzy. I'm not a crazy fashion person because I have a different approach to it. I also see the commercial aspect. I want my clothes to end up in women's closets and I want to make things I know that people will like and buy. It all started when Kretschmer won a bid for a project during university. He's now known as one of the top uniform designers in his field. Pilots, flight attendants and hotel staff around the world wear designs by Guido Maria Kretschmer. I give a pilot's jacket or a hotel maid's dress the same consideration I'd give an evening gown. It has to be well made. It has to fit well, especially if you wear it every day. I've learned a lot through making uniforms. It gave me the chance to work in fashion. Kretschmer founded his couture brand in 2004. He's participated in a number of runway shows, like this one at Berlin Fashion Week last year. The designer generates a lot of buzz. He's often referred to as the German Valentino. The final item sent down the runway during any show is especially important. Traditionally, a designer showcases a bridal gown, and Kretschmer's new collection does not disappoint. You have to seduce people. This dress has body and tailoring. It's good to end with a dress like this, though the design gets finished last minute. We're still embroidering the night before in the showroom. How lucky is the woman who gets to wear that dress? Fashion was the main buzz in Berlin this past week, but the Women's Soccer World Cup was also drawing crowds all over Germany. And while you might think the national team players wear the same kit on the field every day, fashion is also a part of their increasingly sophisticated public image. The fashion label Cinque has been dressing up Germany's women's team since 2007, and when they're not running after that ball, they cut some pretty sharp figures. This is what the German women's football team looks like when they're ready to hit the pitch. And this is what they look like when they swap their jerseys for high fashion. In 2006, manager Thomas Bex happened to meet Silvia Knight, coach of the women's team at a German football association event. She promptly invited him to come and watch them train. 
We got along so well that we spontaneously decided to launch a cooperation. Based in the town of Mönchengladbach, Cinque has been dressing the women's team since 2007, including for the last World Cup in China, the UEFA Championship in Finland in 2009, and of course this year's World Cup here in Germany. The label designs whole collections for their official appearances. We factor in that they'll be traveling, so it needs to be comfortable. It needs to be a bit stretchy, wrinkle-resistant and easy care, easy to wash and iron, so that they can feel like they're in their tracksuits. So that the girls practically in a second training outfit. Tracksuits aren't usually a Cinque trademark. The company is presenting its upcoming summer collection at this Düsseldorf showroom. The label comes out with two main and mid-season collections for men and women each year. It sees itself as an ambassador of the Italian attitude towards life, spirited but smart and laid back. This despite the fact that the company was founded in Germany about 25 years ago. Verena Geigner became head designer for Cinque women's wear four years ago. She says football and fashion are not a contradiction. First of all, the Cinque collection is meant to be casual and sporty. There's a sporty touch to the collection because of the materials we selected. That's why they're not mutually exclusive. It would be more difficult for a more couture-oriented label to design for female athletes, but it works quite well with Cinque's target group and the orientation of the collection. The Cinque Favorita 2011 collection was developed in close cooperation with the team. Select pieces priced up to 300 euros will also go on sale this summer at high-end retail outlets. We didn't want it to be a costume. We basically wanted these outfits to highlight these women's personalities. Because you're normally dealing with very strong personalities. And with the strong outfit they got from us, they can emphasize that even more. The collaboration with Cinque proves that Germany not only plays well, they dress well too. Well, dressing well is all in a day's work for Dorothee Schumacher, who's also one of German fashion's international players. After studying business, she went on to complete apprenticeships in textile craft all around Europe. She then founded her own label in Mannheim in 1989, and her timeless, elegant and very feminine look immediately found favour with her public. Mannheim is not exactly anyone's idea of a glamorous location. It's in an industrial region and the second largest city in Baden-Württemberg, Germany. Yet it's here that Dorothea Schumacher designs the clothes for her luxury label. Mannheim makes me feel good. The city welcomed me with open arms and I'm left to my own devices. Mannheim is also a great starting point from which to go out and explore how the rest of the world looks and feels. Her designs are inspired by her moods. Schumacher produces three collections a year with her team in the Mannheim studio. Stars like top model Claudia Schiffer, Mila Jovovich and Hollywood actress Halle Berry love the Schumacher style. It's fashion with a deep appreciation for detail. All these tiny details let women know that it's been made with just them in mind. A small bit of trim which just feels great. And even if it's not something you'd think of yourself, you feel it's something nice. And then you get inspired with nice ideas. Clothing that emboldens women and emphasizes their personal styles. 
That's always been the 45-year-old designer's goal. She was 23 when she launched her first collection. It bucked the trend from the start. All the women around me who had any standing whatsoever were wearing dark suits with tightly buttoned up blouses. It almost looked like they were trying to imitate men. And then there was my personal look. A blazer can be fun, but please, only with something feminine. Her first piece, a delicate ribbed shirt. Fashion buyers were thrilled, and the first big contracts ensued. Soon, Schumacher was designing dresses and slacks as well. Schumacher's clothes are currently selling in over 40 countries. And her first two stores have opened in Berlin and Moscow. More are planned. Thanks to Dorothea Schumacher, fashion made in Mannheim is the new seal of excellence in the fashionable cities of the world. Oh, back to Berlin now, where another of Germany's hot young designers finds more inspiration than he can pack into any one collection. Kilian Kerner studied drama in Berlin before making a sharp left turn into the fashion world. He's been showing at Berlin Fashion Week since 2008, and he's often touted as Germany's next big fashion export. Well, he says every one of his collections is developed through a world of emotions, experiences and fast-lived moments. Killian Kerner at the shoot for his 2012 Spring and Summer collection. The Berlin-based designer now creates two collections per season, one for Killian Kerner and another for his second line, Killian Kerner Senses. His creations are especially popular in the US, Japan, Spain, and Germany. This time I really like the Killian Kerner Senses collection and the Killian Kerner collection. I've really been looking forward to the shoots for the last 10 days. This time we have really great models, and I think we've really gotten to the heart of things as never before. The 32-year-old never attended a school for fashion design. He planned on becoming an actor and just made clothes on the side for himself and his friends. After receiving lots of compliments, Kerner decided to launch his own label. That was seven years ago. I teamed up with a seamstress and learned from her. I was very naive and insisted on doing things others might not have because they knew it would be too complicated. Now, Kilian Kerner has 15 employees who turn his ideas into reality. His fashions are unconventional, but always wearable. I think the typical thing about Kilian Kerner is taking a fashion classic and fooling around with it a bit. It's taking a traditional shirt, putting the pockets on the other side and adding three pockets instead of one. Or like with this shirt, getting rid of the sleeves. Kerner's ideas come from personal experiences. His latest collection is an exploration of life's phases and new beginnings. With me, everything develops through emotions. When I come close to finishing one collection, I notice what direction things are taking, what the next theme will be. Then I immerse myself into this emotional world through music or memories, or by going to places where I can be alone and revisit feelings I had in certain situations. Then I start designing. Kilian Kerner has presented his designs in Paris, London, and New York. For the last three years, he's become a central figure in Berlin's Fashion Week, like here, where he was presenting his 2011 summer collection. Much feared fashion critic Susie Mendez is among his admirers. What sets Kilian Kerner's shows apart is his use of live music. This time around, Danish pop star Mas Langer is appearing. As always, Killian Kerner wrote the song himself. Soul, soul, 
I'm really excited about being part of a, a fashion show in, in this way, and especially because it's it's Killian. We we seem to to have a vibe going when it comes to you know he he designs clothing that I really really like and that I enjoy performing in. Music and fashion for Killian Kerner, they're two things that always go together. And just so you know, that song was indeed a major hit at Kilian Kana's show last week, which earned heaps of praise from both critics and the audience. Well, a successful run for the summer edition of Berlin Fashion Week. And don't forget that you can find our highlights edition on our website. And with that, we hope you enjoyed them. And until we meet again, all the best from Berlin and Auf Wiedersehen.